Hi guys, DC Brakes here on the DBS Institute YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna be looking at Harmony. Harmony is actually really a community that's focused around open source AI music generation that uses an AI tool called Dance Diffusion. Compared to many of the other music AI tools that I've looked at here on the DBS channel, this is perhaps the most exciting, but also the most challenging. There's no easy to use UI, you have to just get your hands dirty and delve into quite a complicated and technical world. In this video though, I'm gonna show you that even if like me, you are very much a music producer and not into coding, with some perseverance, you can get some pretty amazing results. For example, I've been using it to create an AI model that can generate some pretty awesome sounding neurofunk style drum and bass bass sounds that sound like this. Yep, all of that was created by an AI. So let's jump on in and see how I did it. So to get started with Dance Diffusion, I highly recommend you join the Harmonine Discord server. You can find a link in their Twitter profile. Their website's currently offline, which is where you'd normally find the links. Uh, so this is the best place to access that. This has a huge amount of information, not only from the users who are all kind of sharing their discoveries and um, sharing their models that they're making and just generally talking about all the development and everything that goes into a project like this. Uh, but there's also the uh, FAQ, which explains about the project. And you can also find on this link, the troubleshooting, uh, information about how the project works, links to the notebooks, that's crucial. These are the bits of code we're gonna be using essentially to train our AIs and also this very useful PDF guide that walks you through step-by-step step in clear English, how to train Dance Diffusion AI to generate sounds. It's the guide that I followed uh, when I first started. And the first thing you're going to need to do before you do anything is to kind of go through this checklist. So you're gonna need a Google Drive account. You can do it with a free account, but every time the model creates a checkpoint that you're gonna use in the future, um, each checkpoint file is 3.3 gigabytes. It's very quickly gonna use up uh, that 15 gigabyte free space. You're probably gonna want to upgrade that. Similarly with a Google Colab account, that's the platform that we're gonna use to access the notebook that trains the AI. You can do it for free, but it tends to kick you out if you're inactive and kind of sets sort of time limits on how much you can use. So if you're gonna be doing uh, a lot of this training, it's worth upgrading that as well. You then need a free account with a website called Weights and Biases. And all this does really, it looks super complicated, <clears throat> but really it's quite simple and it's just really used for tracking the progress of your training uh, of your model over time. And the most important thing that you need to start with is your audio files. So I'm using a data set of around 800 base samples that I've generated over the years. You can use as little as sort of uh, a few dozen. You can use you know as many as you like. As it says here, you can get good results with about 100 audio files. The considerations really are, if you have a massive data set and it's quite varied, the output's gonna be varied. If you use a very small data set that's really kind of limited in, uh, you know, if it's all really similar, you're gonna get a really similar kind of output each time. So just think about what it is you're actually trying to achieve and then create a data set uh, appropriately. And you need to make sure as well that those audio files are all the same kind of sample rate you've removed silence, you've normalized them, put fades in and processed it. And because this is such a time consuming process, once you start training, you don't want to spend hours and hours training bad quality audio. So make sure that your audio is uh, all processed nicely before you begin. So coming down the guide then, you then have links to the notebooks. So there's two notebooks that we can use. One is the fine tuned Dance Diffusion notebook and the other is the main Dance Diffusion notebook. I'm only gonna fo focus on this fine tuning one in this video. This is the model, uh, sorry, this is the uh, process by where we can create our own model based on our own set of training data, but we're not starting from scratch. We're fine tuning an existing model. And these are the existing models. These are checkpoints. I mentioned those 3.3 gigabyte checkpoints. These are checkpoints that other people have created um, on other models. So this is glitch one, which has been trained on audio files um, that are kind of glitchy in nature, I guess. There's these other ones that are clips from Jonathan Mann's Song A Day project. There's also a piano based one. It doesn't really matter because what we're gonna be doing is taking that starting point and then gradually replacing all the audio with AI generated audio based on our data set. So let's go ahead and jump into the fine tuned Dance Diffusion notebook. This is what it looks like. 
and without kind of getting too deeply into how it all works, all you really need to do is to run each of these little segments one at a time in sequence to um, be able to train your AI. The first cell here is, there's no code at all, it's just the writing about the software. The first one we're gonna run is the setup section. There's three cells here, each one of these is a cell and we just need to run these in order and you do that just by clicking on it. And the first one here is going to check the GPU status. So none of the processing happens on our computer, it all happens in the cloud on a GPU. And so all this is going to do is going to connect our fine-tuned dance diffusion uh, notebook to a GPU in the cloud, this Tesla T4, which is now done. The next thing we're going to do is to prepare the folders. So this is going to connect our notebook to our Google Drive. You just need to give it permission to access your drive so that it can read the audio files and then also save the checkpoints um, that it's going to create as well. And then once that's run, the next thing we need to do is to install the dependencies. So the dependencies essentially is just the code that it's going to use to run the training model. Now this step can take a little while, so whilst that's running I'm just going to jump over to Weights and Biases and show you around over there. So essentially don't worry about all these complicated looking graphs and you know things on the screen here, we're only really using it for kind of one or two things essentially. This first chart here we can see each one of these coloured lines represents a time that I've run the training model and each one of these kind of steps represents where it's reached uh, a checkpoint and then created a, uh, a checkpoint that we can use in the future and the number of steps that the model has is displayed at the bottom. So this was based off the JMAN 580 ones that started at 580,000 steps and I've added what like another 10,000 or so steps in 250 step increments essentially. For each of these 250 steps, as we'll see later, it's going to create a, an audio demo for us uh, so we can listen to all the audio and you don't necessarily need to use the main Dance Diffusion um, notebook because this will actually spit out quite good usable audio at this point. So let's have a listen to some of the recent uh, audio that we've got. So uh, if you don't make um, kind of gnarly drum bass, you might think this is all just completely horrible noise, but some of that is really good usable kind of bass samples that have been AI created. This is all new sounds that have never been made before. Now, if we wind the clock back to the very first steps, so this is step 580,000. This is the original um, model that we were using it, that we're now fine tuning. And so this is the kind of sounds from that uh, Jonathan Mann Song A Day project. You can hear what it sounds like. So this is gradually being kind of fine tuned. And so you can hear it's kind of a combination of that acoustic music and some of the bass sounds. And then as it refines it, refines it, refines it, it gradually sounds nothing like that acoustic music and sounds only like the bass sounds that I've used as my training data. So that's really all that we're using this for, a way to see how our training sessions are getting on, uh, how many steps we've done, and listening to some of the audio that we can download by clicking on these little download arrows here if there's some stuff that we want to use. So let's go back to our notebook. The dependencies is now finished. And now we can start training. So the first thing we need to do is to connect the notebook to weights and biases so that we can track the run, the training run. We just click on this little link here, that's going to give us an API key, don't worry what that means, just literally copy and paste it into this little check uh, box here and hit return. That links it all up and then the only slightly complicated thing we need to do now is just to tell the model where, uh, or the training machine if you like, where everything is. So if we give our project, I've been calling mine uh, DD Base Fine Tune because I'm doing base. We just need to tell it the path to the director of the audio data that's going to be using for fine tuning. And we can find that by using this little uh, file browser over here, coming to Drive, My Drive. I've created an AI folder, audio, and then base. And so you're just right clicking on here, copying the path and pasting it into there. Then we need to show it the uh, checkpoint to fine tune. If you're starting from scratch, you just will probably put in one of the um, initial checkpoints 
Um, if you've created one already and you want to resume your training, so I've got mine in this models folder here, Dance Diffusion, Fine Tune, DD Bass, Fine Tune. Um, you can go in here and uh, grab the most recent checkpoints. So that for me would be this one here. Again, just right click, copy the path and put it in there. So this is going to resume training from that, the last most recent step, 590 odd thousand that it was. Then we're just going to, assuming we want to save our checkpoints to the same folder, just copy the main uh, file path for the uh, directory path for where we're keeping our checkpoints. And, and that is really it. You can leave all of this stuff the same. The only thing you might want to change is this, which we'll come to in a second. But essentially this step here is just telling it how many training steps between creating demos. This one is telling it how many steps between it saves those big checkpoint files, that 3.3 gigabyte file, the sample rate they're training at, 48 kilohertz, and the sample size. This checkbox here, as it explains, you only need to turn this off if you're basically training drums or any audio where you want the data to always start at the beginning of the audio files themselves. But otherwise, if you're leaving that on, you can hit uh, play up here to run the cell, and now it's going to start running the training. So it'll take just a, a few moments to get going uh, with that. The first thing it's going to do uh, once it's um, started is to uh, create a new training run that we can now monitor in uh, weights and biases here. So if we go over to weights and biases now, we should start to see a new, here it is, Playful Valley 10. That one, that's, so this is gonna start creating a blue line on our chart over here. And then as it starts producing demos, these will also appear down here as well. But otherwise we can just let this run. You can see here it's restoring the states from the previous checkpoint. And it's just going to start training, training, training. And then every 250 steps, it's going to um, create a new demo for us. And every 500 steps, it's gonna create a new checkpoint. Uh, and that is really it. And essentially, once you've started doing that and you just let it run, you come back to it a few hours later, you can then start to log into your Weights and Biases account and hear some of the demos of the audio that you're getting. Now, if you are interested in using the main Dance Diffusion notebook, it's a very similar process. I'm not gonna go through it in great detail here, but essentially you just need to follow the instructions, which explains uh, what these are um, very clearly. And essentially within this now, we can generate random samples. We can regenerate our own sounds as well. We can interpolate between two different sounds and we can regenerate sounds using the built-in audio recording widget. It explains how to do that. And once again, it's just a question of running the various um, sort of uh, sections, the different parts, again, linking up to a GPU, preparing the folders, doing all that kind of stuff. Um, the only difference is, is that if you're doing this with the data set that you've already created, rather than picking one of these models, you just simply select custom, uh, and then you're gonna be using a custom model and you're just gonna be putting in your own checkpoint path here. So we find the checkpoint that we've created and then it's gonna be using that uh, as well. Um, and then that is really it. And this, the only reason why you might want to use this in this context is that you can also generate new sounds here, in which case you can create batches of audio clips rather than using the output uh, demo audio from here. So it's just another way of running the model and generating demo clips essentially without having to train it uh, any further. But that's really it for this video in terms of um, demonstrating how this works. It's a lot of information to take on board. It will take you quite a long time to kind of get up and running with it. But essentially, I just wanted to show you that from a perspective of a music producer, it's entirely possible to use this technology and generate your own original AI generated content without having to have like a PhD in computer science. It's relatively straightforward once you kind of get into it. So that was an overview of how you can use Harmonized Dance Diffusion to train your own AI models and create your own AI generated audio content. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to get more great videos like this from us here at the DBS Institute delivered straight into your inbox. But that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.